reflection on the inside. The band, again, is a, a, a nice size band. It's actually uh, about a quarter of an inch wide just on that band. If I put a little ruler up there, yeah, that's just about on the blue topaz. That is a simulated blue topaz. And then it is surrounded by 14 two point There are thousands of artists struggling for a chance. Tonight, we'll begin a two-part look at a local singer who just may be on the brink. For Tony Elliott, it could be the start of something big. Woo! Get on down, you guys. Come on. About the time most of us are heading home for the night, Tony Elliott's workday is just beginning. So let me be your lover. Let me be your lover. For most of his adult life, Tony has spent his nights like he's spending this one at the Red Baron in Newport News, entertaining. I played in bands throughout uh, junior high, high school. He played for free until people would pay him, then in his share of dives. There was the hotel circuit with color-coordinated costumes. I've played all over the world and uh, for various, various events. You have done USO, I've toured over in Europe, lived in Japan. At 27, Tony has paid his dues and is still paying. For me, music is, is, is my life and it's, it's business. It's a business thing, it's what I do to make a living. Music seems to run in this family. Wife Lisa used to sing in Tony's band. You can judge for yourself about their son, TJ. <laughs> But through all the club dates and the road tours, there's been a dream, a goal. Someday to take that next step, to shoot for the big time. So many people have so many things, oh, we can do this for you and we can do that, and it never pans out, and, you, and there's so many disappointments. But one person who noticed Tony would not be a disappointment. The only catch, he insisted Tony needed a tape of his own material. So basically, after about a year and a half, two years of me bugging him enough to get me a tape of some original material, he did. Ron Herbert, like Tony, knows about paying dues in the music business. And over the years, he's made contacts. Tony's tape impressed Herbert. So I sent it to Paul Fishkin, my friend at Modern Records in Los Angeles, who handles Stevie Nicks. He also manages a group called Kicks. Paul Fishkin liked the tape. Liked it so much, as a matter of fact, that he and his record company decided to finance a return to the recording studio to do the songs right. Four days here at the brand new high tech Windmark Studios in Virginia Beach. Okay, man, party time. I love it. So Tony may finally have gotten his break. Not a dream fulfilled quite yet, but at least a shot at it. Tomorrow night into the studio to watch a song being built one piece at a time. Oh, interesting. How big a break is this for Tony? It really is a pretty big break. Most people don't get this far. Of course, there's a very long way to go yet. We'll look at that tomorrow night, too. Great stuff. Look forward to it. Thank you. Tonight, we wrap up our look at a local singer who just may be getting a shot at the big time. Many of you may have heard Tony Elliott. He's been performing in Hampton Roads for six years, paying his dues. Now a record company has noticed him and financed a recording session. Here's part two of Start of Something Big. I'm the only one for you. Windmark Studios look like they should be in Los Angeles, but they're a nearly $2 million gamble by Michael Marquardt in Virginia Beach. There's a lot of great talent here, and, uh, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a great market. Today, the former drummer with a flock of seagulls is producing Tony Elliott's demo tape. While well, live performances are loose and spontaneous, the recording studio is exacting and precise. It takes four days to record just four songs, and at that, it's considered a breakneck speed. For the first two days, each instrument was recorded separately on a 24-channel tape. Tomorrow, they'll all be mixed together. But now, on day three, Tony records the vocals. Let me be your lover, lover, lover.
In the studio, it's just Tony singing to himself in the earphones. But on the other side of the glass... I'm the only one for you. So let me be your lover. Each section is done over and over until it's just right. For Tony, this might be his most important performance ever. Okay, man, here we go. Upper left-hand corner, give me some passion this time, okay? When the vocals are finished, Tony adds harmonies, and then the background singers, including his wife, Lisa. Let me be your love. So let me be your lover. Let me be your lover. Let me be your lover. The finished product is shipped overnight to Modern Records in California. The Elliots go home. The waiting begins, but the excitement continues. This is fantastic. We're so excited. It's just like, oh, okay, is this going to be it? All right, are we ready for it? Or... <laughs> Modern Records' biggest star is Stevie Nicks of Fleetwood Mac fame. The label pretty much launched her solo career. Both have done well. The label's owner, Paul Fishkin, will give the thumbs up or thumbs down on Tony. And the verdict? I talked with him by phone from California on Monday. I thought that Tony's was really, really showed a lot of promise. The material, uh, his singing quality, and a couple of the songs I think actually could really be hits. And definitely puts us in a position where we're going to move to the next level of development. The next level, Fishkin and a producer will probably fly to Charlotte, North Carolina, where Tony is performing to see him this weekend. And a well-known talent management firm is also interested. Really, for Tony, this really could be the start of something big. What a great story. Okay, when's Tony going to cut a record? That's a good question. It's a ways <laughs> off yet, but uh, the way things are going now, is so far, it looks pretty good. It could happen. Very talented. Of course, you'll keep us posted. I will right? indeed. Okay. <laughs>